Hi, my name is John Cordy, and in today's video, I just wanted to sort of discuss some of the delays and stuff that I like in the Helix. I did the video a week or so ago about what's wrong with the Helix reverbs, where I was sort of pushing back on the idea that the reverbs and the Helix aren't good because, as it turns out, Josh from JHS pointed out that they were programmed by the same guy as the guy who went on to make Meris pedals, which I think are super highly regarded, and the guy that programmed the Verbzilla algorithms, which are included in the legacy reverbs are also on the Helix and I thought that was kind of interesting so I was also asked can I build a preset or no I wasn't asked that but I was asked could I do some stuff with the delays so that's what this is so I'm going to start with a, a mail order twin because um, I quite like the sound of that amp turn the drive down uh, channel volume up and why not put a compressor in front of it um, or just a comp and then at the end we'll stick a reverb and we'll use the glitz turn the mix down so this is our tone without delay and I guess I'll assign that to there as well just so we can have it without reverb if you want so here's my my general go-to delay happens to be stereo dual delay this is one of my favorites um, you'll notice with the default settings you've got this chorus on so I turn that off generally and I find those settings just like that work quite well um, things that I might do personally with my lead tones I turn the feedback up a bit so you've got a bit more of a, a sustaining feel and I turn the mix between 21 and 29 higher than that and it can start to get a bit in the way So, dual delay is definitely one that I go to quite a bit. Another trick that you could try with this, if you turn the left time all the way down, and this is going to take a while to get there, and then turn the right again all the way down to maybe like 10, 11 milliseconds. This is a trick that I learned from John Petrucci back in the day. Turn the feedback all the way down, and then turn the mix all the way up. This is something that can work quite nicely to kind of throw things left and right and give you that double tracking kind of feel. Um, so you can use this kind of technique to throw things left and right. Um, so maybe for like rhythm parts. Or I do this for my kind of Pliny presets. Just to get that kind of spacey tone. So that's a technique I use quite a lot. So turn the left time all the way down, turn the right time, you know, between sort of 5 and 30 milliseconds, turn the mix all the way up, feedback all the way down and you can sort of turn it into this stereo thing. Now there are obviously other ways other than delay to do that within the Helix. That's just one way that I like to do things. So other delays that I like, the duck delay is super useful. I've not used it enough, but it's something I should use more. And obviously you know what a ducking delay does, but essentially whilst you're playing, the trails don't get in the way but the gaps they're brought up to kind of fill that space a really good way to maintain clarity in a preset so duck delay is worth having a look at and you can change in here the amount of ducking and the time it takes to kind of attack and also you can turn it into a gated delay which sounds like this so for that one it only whilst you're playing the notes so 
so it does kind of the opposite thing whilst you're playing the delay will work and then it kind of fades away as you're not playing so you can change the amount of ducking so uh, let's change it back to ducking with it all the way down you just have a normal delay but as you increase the duck, let's just turn the feedback up a bit so we can hear a more pronounced. So you can really get quite a varied amount of tones out of this thing. I'm filming. Now the Vintage Digital I believe is based on like an Alesis quadroverb type thing and so obviously you've got your typical stuff but you've got bit depth and sample rates so if you take down a bit depth you get a bit more of a, a lo-fi kind of sound it's a dog barking outside so 24 bits is like the highest quality and then 48 kilohertz to give you kind of a true stereo digital type then this scale thing I think is also kind of important so if you have it 100% I think everything should be in the center and then as you take it down the gap between left and right becomes greater until eventually you get it just in one ear in theory so you can use that to kind of get different tones I think yeah, mess around with that to your own whatever you want to call it. And then headroom, if you're finding that you're clipping the input of the vintage digital, you can just slam this all the way up so that it doesn't ever clip, hopefully. That would be what I would suggest. So maybe by default I would try and put that headroom up as much as possible. I might take the depth of the uh, kind of modulation down a smidge. Scale I might put up to 100 so that I'm not having the double attack. But you know, if you've got it 75, you get the da -da -da thing. Other things worth checking out there's obviously loads. Transistor tape is great. Uh, the wire flutter, I really like the sound of that. That one, definitely a favourite. Again, Cosmos Echo, 100% a favourite of mine as well. You can change the head to be having lots of different rhythms and stuff. And you can turn up the headroom again, like on the vintage digital, which I like to do. And Anyway, a super, super cool delay. It takes up a lot of DSP, but I think it's kind of worth it. Then again, loads of other things that are worth checking out. Multipass, I've just discovered today, does this kind of thing. So sort of like the Strymon Night Sky, I didn't realize they had this. And you can change the pattern of it. And you can have an echo version or delay. One other thing that I just wanted to highlight was this low res in the legacy reverbs, like with legacy delay, sorry, like with the reverbs, there's plenty of useful stuff in here as well. And it tends to use a little bit less DSP. Here's the, the sweep echo is worth checking out. One that's definitely good for ambient stuff and then also low res is really cool too so the kind of lo-fi tones and ambient stuff you've got tone controls and stuff but lots
lots of variation there. So again, I think there's loads of really useful stuff in the Helix delays. Those are just some of the ones that I would check out. The low res, maybe the sweep. Um, consider maybe Cosmos Echo is probably my favourite delay in there of all. The Elephant Man, again, is definitely worth checking out. That multi-pass can do the Strymon Night Sky thing. Um, vintage Digital, super useful. Duct Delay, super useful. And obviously you've got loads of other stuff. The multi-taps, and I've never even really checked those out, but I'm pretty sure there's going to be really useful stuff in there. So, I don't know, maybe that helps give you an idea of one or two things to check out, if you were wondering. But... There's lots of really cool stuff in there, I think. Sweep Echo, I guess, is going to be a modern version of. But yeah, there's just loads of really good stuff to check out. And for me, I think the real power is in combining them. So here's one of my favourite presets that I've put together. So yeah, that's uh, available in the description if you want to check out that particular preset. It will only work on Helix because it's complicated. Um, but those are some of my favourite delays and the things that I want to spend more time checking out. And yeah, I'll probably do a bit of a follow-up on this because there's loads of delays to check out. Um, and no shortage of really useful stuff that they can all do. Thank you for stopping by. If you want to like and subscribe, you could. I'll catch you in another video soon. Cheers!